Have you ever wondered why there's these little holes in all of the prongs on cords? Let's dig into it. I've gotten this question by a whole bunch of people. Seems like a random thing to want to know, but it kind of made me curious because I didn't know the answer. So I've noticed a whole bunch of these little cords that I buy have holes in them right at the prong where they plug into a receptacle. Like this one does, this one does. Some of them don't. Every once in a while you run uh, across some that don't. So it's like, well, why? Why do they have them and why don't others have them? So I went to Google and I searched for some of the answers. So it seemed like uh, there were three different answers that came through repetitively. By the way, I have a relationship with a whole bunch of these manufacturers. So I actually reached out and got an answer to this. So make sure you stay tuned to the end and you'll actually hear the answer. The first answer is that people think that they punch these holes out from the manufacturer uh, to save material to cut down on cost. Now that, I mean, maybe, that just kind of seems like a far stretch because why wouldn't they cut out even more material? Why is it this specific hole size pretty consistently across all plugs? So I thought that's probably not the answer, but who knows? The second thing that I found with Google was that people thought that, oh, it's for lockout tag out. So lockout tag out for you non-electricians out there, uh, we have to lock out and tag out things so that people don't get electrocuted and come behind and turn something on when you're out working on something. So to me, that didn't seem like an answer. But some people had, had suggested, well, maybe it, before you use a cord, you can attach a tag, put a little zip tie through here, zip tie a tag with instructions, and it actually forces someone to read the tag and then cut the thing off, which really they could just see the tag and cut the thing off. I don't know. So that didn't seem like a good answer either. And then finally, somebody said, uh, we think that it's for receptacles, like inside of receptacles, there must be like some kind of little bump thing that these things have to stick into. But really, if you stick something into a receptacle, you don't ever feel like a snap in place or like you don't have difficulty pulling it out. They usually slide out pretty, uh, pretty easily. So that one seemed like the most plausible to me. So I actually opened up a receptacle and I broke it open and I pulled apart the little contacts on the inside to see if there was actually some kind of bump in there. Dustin versus receptacle fight. So, Fail. Uh, <laughs> I've taken plugs apart before. Uh, the next one came apart really easy though. And after pulling a couple of these apart, I realized there is no said bump. So I was like, all right, dude, what's the deal? So I called Legrand. Legrand, thank you so much for getting back to me on this, but they actually asked their engineers and the engineers had this to say. Historically, the receptacle female contacts had poor spring force and relied on a protrusion on the contact to engage the holes in the blades to keep the plug from falling out of the receptacle. At that time, most plugs supplied short-term low power loads. As loads increased, it was found greater gripping forces were needed to prevent overheating. So this is probably an issue that you're going to see with a lot older receptacles way back in the day. So the reason they manufacture them still this way is because when there are older receptacles that are installed somewhere, you still want to make sure equipment can plug into them safely. And so this older equipment, if it does have these little bumps on the inside, will at least hold these uh, plugs in when you plug them in a little bit better. So that is the answer. It's just that most if not all receptacles that are made nowadays don't have that problem. They have stronger contacts on the inside so they don't need that anymore. So that's your answer. Now, if you're curious what's on the inside of a receptacle, I actually have a video right here. You should check this video out. Pretty cool, I crack one open, see how everything works on the inside. And if you're curious to see how a three-way switch works on the inside, I have this video here where I pull the thing open and show how a three-way contact works. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.